Do you have five top tips for us that we can uh, follow to save some money? Absolutely. Hi, Nicholas. Thank you for having me. So, yeah, I guess number one is always like my biggest top tip is for a lot of families to try and create a budget. Now, I feel like a lot of people roll their eyes at the thought of a budget, but a budget is crucial to work out what you can and can't afford to spend, especially now rising um, bills we're going to have to account for. So that's my number one tip. Number t um, tip number two, try and build an emergency pot of savings if you can. Um, again, that budget will help you build that emergency pot of savings so you know you have money to fall back on rather than having to resort to any streams of debt. Now, my third tip is my favorite is to utilize on cashback websites. Now, a lot of people always think that these are scams, but websites such as Top Cashback and Quidco are brilliant if you're someone that likes to do online shopping. These websites allow you to give a percentage of your money back on your um, shopping online, which is great. Um, I'd also recommend utilizing comparison websites, especially if you're maybe looking to renew your insurance policies, if you you need to um, update your bills, et cetera, et cetera. Um, some websites such as moneysupermarket.com and money.co.uk are great websites for this. And lastly, as we know, obviously the cost of living crisis has had a huge impact on families across the UK. It's really important that people really do reach out and talk to people, whether that's their family, organisations, whether that's your energy providers, your banks. If you're defaulting on anything, please reach out and talk to people. In your experience, what are the things that people are most worried about? Is, is there a particular theme, something that comes through an awful lot? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think a lot of people now, obviously, we've we've realised that the cost of living has gone up. But I think loads of people are worried about how long this this rate and um, this rate of inflation is going to last for. So I think lots of people are now trying to adjust this kind of new normal. And I think that's probably the biggest worry about how long people are going to have to pinch their pennies for. And what should people be most wary of? We all talk about scams and everything else. There seem to be more and more of those, and particularly fastening on the, the worries that people have at the moment. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like you said, Nicholas, hit the nail on the head. Lots of scams at the moment. There's lots of get-rich-quick schemes, which I know are preying on the vulnerable at the moment, both on social media, outside, you know, just general banking, scams, all that stuff. I think it's really important that people stay um, um, stay clear of that. And then also buy now, pay later schemes, if you can avoid using those as well. I know it's very easy to fall into that trap, but if you can avoid those kind of schemes as well, I'd really recommend it. Yeah. And what about this business? It, it, it's sort of things that, that bug me. A lot of people still need cash, don't they? And getting yeah. cash is getting more and more difficult. Banks are getting more difficult to access. There's always the jolly mm. old post office that you can use. I, I've only discovered this quite recently. I must be very slow, I suppose. If you've got a bank card at all, you can go in there and get cash and they'll give you fivers and coins and everything else, which you still need for a lot of things, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I feel like, especially for those that are maybe struggling to stick to their budgets at the moment, cash can be king. I feel like scientifically it's proven that, you know, if you're spending with cash rather than your Apple Pay or your credit cards, et cetera, et cetera, it's really um, easy to keep handle and keep track of your spending that way as well. Indeed. Now, the other thing is we see so many of these uh, big companies, the oil companies, the energy companies, British Gas and so on, making enormous profits, absolutely enormous profits. Can you please, in really simple terms, explain to us why we've all got to pay so much more for our energy, but these people are making so much more in profits? What's going on? That's a good question. I wish I honestly knew the answer. I do think, you know, sadly, we just know that the cost of production has gone up, the cost of importing goods have gone up. So again, those have really been passed on to us rather than, you know, these energy bills, um, energy providers paying for these costs themselves. Yes. And now the other thing uh, a lot of people talk about are food banks. They are very important, are they? And, and I don't know about you, but having visited several of them, I think people, first of all, it's great if people uh, donate items to it, if you can possibly mm -hmm. do that. Buy a bit more at the supermarket, I think, and put it in the food bank if you can. But also encourage people to actually use them. A lot of people must find it difficult to do so, Ola. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I completely agree with that. I think a lot of people are embarrassed to go to these food banks. But again, those food banks are there to help us. They're a great facility. I think it's a huge shame that we're really even having to use them, having to use these kind of services. But again, like I said, they're out there to help us. Also, um, local councils have a lot of schemes that people should take advantage of. Also, you know, check in the government website to see what help you might be eligible for in the forms of benefits as well, because I think I know a lot of people's financial situations have changed. Again, there's no shame in seeking benefits any additional help you know like i said the help is there to help us out through these times